perhaps his existence uh, and other issues that were important to him. And one day, uh, uh, Angel Gabriel uh, approaches him and he was frightened and uh, uh, the angel says to him, read. And he says, I don't know how to read. And the angel says again, read. And he says, I don't know how to read. The angel uh, uh, repeats it again, and Prophet Muhammad uh, also repeats his response, I don't know how to read. And then uh, it is uh, reported that these five verses were revealed. Then uh, Gabriel uh, uh, told him these five uh, uh, verses. It goes like this. Read in the name of your Lord who creates or who created. I actually included the Arabic there. Don't let it uh, uh, frighten you. Uh, there's, a, there's a reason why I'm going to go with the Arabic uh, letters uh, in my next life. The second verse says, creates man or created man from a clot. And then it says, read, your Lord is the most bounteous. And then the fourth verse says, who teaches by the pen. And in the fifth uh, verse it says, teaches man that which he do not. When you look at this, um, it just seems like, okay, there's a scripture, you know, some verses, and I don't know what they're saying. There are hundreds of uh, places in the Quran which is calling uh, its readers to question life and question uh, the uh, you know perspective, different perspectives, uh, trying to provide an explanation about the life in general. And then I wanted to do the same thing. I'm a human being. I have mind. I have heart. All other faculties, and I can question it. I'm born with these qualities. I cannot deny it. And then I started asking questions about this first verse. It says, read in the name of your Lord who creates or who created. There's a reason why I put it the other way around, because the word order is important. When you look at this, it has a lot of big statements significant statements, powerful statements, uh, and you can ask questions about it. And there are four statements in this one, as I uh, you know, outlined here from the Arabic. It says, read is the first one, second in the name of, third is your Lord, and the fifth, uh, it says, who creates or created. I mean, maybe I can say, these are such big claims. At the center of it all, it says there is someone who created. That means this, this existence uh, that we experience is not coming from itself. There is someone who is creating it, right? And you can ask the question, how do I know? Right? You're a human, you can, you can ask it. And then you can ask, what's the evidence? How do I know? And second, it is saying your Lord. And this creator is also your Lord. That means uh, watching over you, providing you sustenance, whatever. It's your Lord too. It's not the creator of the universe. How do I know that it's also my Lord? Second, it is saying, in the name of your Lord. What does it mean, in the name of your Lord? What, what is that? And it says, read. Remember the response of uh, Prophet Muhammad? He said, I don't know how to read. I can say the same thing. I don't know how to read. What are you talking about? What is it? Right? You can ask these questions. If you're reading any text, you're free to ask it. If you say, okay, this is the word of God, I'm not going to ask the question. Then that means you are forcing yourself to accept something. That is against the understanding that there shouldn't be any compulsion or force in religion. That means it should make sense to all of us. Okay? And then, with asking these questions, I read the second verse. Oh, by the way, these are the four statements. And then I looked at the second verse. It says, creates, from, creates men or humans from a clot. That means human beings are created from a drop of water. OK? Well, we're running out of time. We have to move fast. So the summary of it is that there are two statements here, clot and human beings. 
in this life, we observe life from a cause and effect relationship, right? Something happens and then another thing happens. We kind of trace the sources of things within the universe. Say, for example, I have apple, it comes from the tree and from the sun. Cause and effect relationship. But this verse is saying, open your eyes. Look at what you call causes and what you call effects. So the results are so complex, so beautiful, so meaningful, that they cannot come from senseless, mindless, purposeless houses. Look at yourself. Look at the mirror today. Do it. Be brave and just look at the mirror and say, hey, whoever your name is, say for example, my name is Zubair. Zubair, you exist out of chances, out of nothing. And see if you're going to accept it. Think about your mind, your questions. We are flesh and bones, but we have these things in our minds. Just look at your hand. Do it. Be brave enough to do it and, and think and ask you the question if whether it, if this can exist by itself or not. Do it. It's, I'm not saying that accept this idea. Do it yourself. And come to your own conclusion. Okay? That is why it seemed to me that the second verse is answering the fourth statement which is the strongest statement in this first verse. Second point, it said, uh, the third said, uh, uh, expression said, your Lord. Look at the third one, it says, read, your Lord is the most bounteous. That means, read your life and see what qualities you have. I have eyes, minds, I have uh, a heart and given hands, ears. These are amazing things, I didn't make it. I have a two years old daughter. When I look at her growing up, I am amazed. You and I know for sure, 100% without any doubt that whatever we have, we're not making it. If I was making myself, the first thing I would do was this. Stop aging. I wanted to. I would do it in my 25 years old, and I was 25 years old. Stop. I cannot do it. That means I don't have control over it. I am being created all the time, okay? And then, it says, in order for you to understand that it's your Lord, you need to read. Question it. Look at it and understand its reality and see whether you exist by yourself or someone is making you in this way. You answer it to yourself. That is why, my understanding, the third verse is explaining the, the uh, I'm sorry, the third verse is explaining the third expression in the first one. Let's move on. You can say, uh, the, the first verse is saying, in the name of. What do you mean in the name of? What is that? And this issue of names is a very central concept in the Quran. Even it, uh, when it describes the, the creation of first human beings, it says, when you created human beings, the angels question question uh, the purpose of their creation. They said, you're praising you already. Why are you creating this uh, human being which is going to shed blood on earth? And God says, that this, this is how it is narrated in the Quran, uh, that if, uh, I know what you, you do not know. And then says uh, to uh, angels uh, or human beings, I, I, I forgot the order, but uh, he asked the angels to name the things. And then they cannot name it, and then ask human beings, and they can name it, and therefore angels prostrated before Adam. That means they understood the purpose of his creation, because it, uh, human beings could name things. And here is what I understand from names. In, in the fourth verse it says, who teaches by the pen? That means God is teaching human beings by the pen. Here is what I understand from the pen. What do you do with the pen? You write. What do you write? Words, expression, and sentences. Isn't it amazing that we human beings, we look at things and we synthesize meanings. We can name things. Say, for example, I see apple, and I can convey that understanding to you by saying apple. Or I see reason, or purpose in something, because I see that one thing is serving, another thing, I look at it, 
uh, and observe. I look at the I look at the different parts of the life, and I see similar patterns. I synthesize them into words, into names. Isn't that amazing? That we can name things, we can speak, we can talk, but we forget it. These are such perfect qualities that are given to us. Who teaches by it, and that means we are able to name things. But how do we put it in this context? You know, the idea that God created it. There's a central concept in the Quran that if you look at uh, uh, the creation or the universe, you're gonna see that. They cannot exist by themselves. They are so complex, meaningful, orderly, and that we don't see such qualities within the creation itself that can create it. Therefore, there must be a creator creating them. And this creation is a reflection of perfect qualities, or in uh, Quran's conceptualization, reflections of the names, beautiful names of the creator. Say, for example, the merciful. That means you observe mercy in the creation, say for example, if you look at apple trees, you eat it, it's, it is bringing you something good that you need. You also look at how uh, babies are provided with the best of the milk when they come to this world, you call it mercy too. And that mercy cannot come from the universe itself, it must be coming from the, the perfect qualities of the creator. That means we can read with the names of the creator, that means not that they they, not that the things we observe in the universe exist by themselves, but, but as a result of the reflection of the perfect qualities of the Creator. And then, so the fourth uh, verse explains the second expression of the first uh, verse. And then, there's this question of reading. Then, you know, remember, the first uh, response was that I don't know how to read. You know, when I heard about the story, and when I reflected upon it, I was fascinated by it. What a response. Read, and he says, I don't know how to read. That means, this is a, this is a big thing, and what does it mean, read? How am I going to read it? This universe is so complex, so meaningful, that I don't even know where to start. In this one, it says, start from yourself. And then, goes on to the meaning aspects of it and says, now you, now you are told what you knew not. That means you now know how to make sense of the world that you see and observe every day. So it goes back to the original call, now you're ready to read. Okay, it first said read. We didn't know how to read, right? But it came to that point. That means my understanding, there are, I could go uh, deeper and deeper into this one. But because we're running out of time, I want to move fast, okay? Any questions so far? I will give you some other examples. There are a lot of verses in the Quran which is talking from the universe, from the existence. And it says, you know, it presents something and then ask questions. I will move fast. Say, for example, this one it says, you know, all praise to gratitude for God. That is whatever you observe, they, whatever qualities you observe, they belong to their creator. And you ask the question, is God better or all day that uh, they associate as partners? Continues, ask these questions. I'm not, like, we don't have time, I'm not gonna go over it. And then brings another perspective, brings another perspective, brings yet another perspective, and says, is there another duty besides God? It doesn't end there. It says, if you have another perspective, bring your evidence if you're true. That means this uh, idea of religion is not about closing your eyes and accepting it. It's about reflection about, uh, over our existence and reflection over our existential questions. The Quran never says, I am saying it in this way and you will accept it. It always engages with the, uh, the faculties of human beings. Their minds, hearts, conscious, spirit, whatever. Move on. We said, the message of the religion should be matching what we have as human beings, right? I will move fast. In, in summary, I think that we all want, we can talk about it for hours, but uh, because we're running out of time, I will move fast. We human beings, in my understanding, desire existence, a body, a life, an eternity, an everlasting life. 
say for example anything 